Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are from across the globe. My name is Kathleen. I'll be your host for today's free class. And I am with the one and only Cassie Draws. Cassie. Hello. <laughs> and she's going to be... She's going to be doing a live demo for us as part of the launch for her online course with Etra Studio. Okay, I can see. Hi, Cassie and Etra. Hello. Hi, BJ. If you guys can hear us, <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, say hi and um, tell us how you guys are doing. If you're going to be following along, let us know as well. That would be interesting. Um, Okay, for those who don't know Etcher, so we are an art learning platform who works with our teachers from all across the globe. And we produce classes and courses on our website, etcherstudio.com. And Cassie has partnered with us to develop a beautiful course for absolute beginners. Um, for those who want to try and venture into the medium acrylic. Um, so this is perfect for you. And so if you want to learn more about the course, I'm going to drop the link in the chat um, for the collection page or for the course page. But um, today's free demo will be a glimpse to everything you're going to be learning in that course. So, okay, I can see a lot of hellos. Hi. A lot of hellos. Hello. hello. Welcome on in. <laughs> Just going to be lurking and listening, but hello. Okay, that's totally fine. <laughs> um. All right, so about the course, we have a four-part course. So session one, two, three, and four, and that's going to run from, oops, sorry. That's going to run starting next week, April 17th, uh, every Wednesday is at 12 noon Eastern time um, until May 8th, uh, 12 noon still Eastern time. And then at the end of these four sessions, we are going to have a live feedback session at the end, which is really exciting because that's where you can submit your candidate work. And Cassie will give feedback. To, oh, I'm pointing at the wrong direction. <laughs> Cassie will give feedback to that. Um, where am I am? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cassie's everywhere. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's going to be really exciting. And I hope that you can, would appreciate, you know, gift of feedback is one of the most wonderful gifts that you can receive from an artist. So um, I'm hoping that's going to push you to do um, or to just be better and excel in what um, you wanted to achieve with acrylic. So enough of me. I'm going to drop the link um, to the reference photo here in the chat first. Um, so if you want to follow along, feel free to click that link. And also, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Cassie, Cassie can see um, the chat as well. So um, I'll just vocalize them so that we can, uh, every, everyone can hear it in the Perfect. recording. Yeah, so I guess that, that's pretty much it for me. So I'm going to hand the floor to Cassie so she can introduce herself and get us started. So Cassie, it's all you. <laughs> awesome. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome on in. Happy to have you guys here. And first, before we get started, a big thank you to Etcher for having me. Um, I'm honored to have the Introduction to Acrylic course on their learning platform. And we've already seen some incredible students take this course, and I'm excited for round two. Um, so thank you guys for being here. And as I mentioned, we're just going to jump right into the swing of things. We're going to get painting today with a live demo. And I'm going to lead you step by step through this painting, just as we would essentially through the course. So we're going to start from your very beginner basics to how to hold a paintbrush, what paintbrushes to choose for which part of your painting, all the way to your color theory, to learning how to do techniques like glazing, which a lot of people may not know what it is when it comes to acrylic. So I'm going to share with you all those little tips and tricks that I've accumulated over my years of painting. I'm going to go ahead and kind of give you all of those little little teasers today, of course. The rest will be in the program. And um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. And I think we've done enough chatting. Let's just go jump right into painting if we can. That would be great. Oh, and I, I am getting over. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm, you can hear it. I'm just getting no, over a cold. <laughs> So I have this cold that's been lingering. So if I ever have to mute, get a drink, like a little clear my throat, I apologize in advance. Hopefully it won't be too bad. But the more I talk, the worse it gets. So just bear with me. <laughs> this is as live as it gets. It, oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> we're live. We're live. There's no we're editing. <laughs> all right, Kathleen, am I okay to change my camera over? Yep. I think we're Perfect. all good. Oh, and I'm Cassie. <laughs> I forgot that part. I'm oh, Cassie. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I paint for a living. So I'm a professional artist. I work with acrylic. I paint a lot of uh, animals, so pet portraits, wildlife. And um, yeah, I'm here to impart some of my knowledge, some that I have. <laughs> and uh, I love to paint. Let's get started. <laughs> Perfect. Hopefully this switches over okay. We're going to adjust things. Bear with me here for a moment. All right. Now, please bear with me. I'm working with a boom arm today, and sometimes they are a little finicky. So <laughs> hopefully this looks okay, and uh, you can see at least some of my palette. Um, I'm going to go through my materials first in case anyone wants to watch this and follow along. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing with acrylic is you're going to want to obviously have a sub like a substance to work on, whether that be a canvas, canvas panel. You can work on an acrylic pad. So there's actually booklets that have um, paper that is able to withstand acrylic. Um, whatever you decide, panel, wood, et cetera, whatever you decide to work in, you're going to want that material now. Now to save us time um, and the lack of movie magic, there's no editing, I have pre-drawn this sketch onto my canvas. So this is going to be in a more leopard eye. Um, and so I've just kind of pre-done this sketch so that you don't have to sit here for 20 minutes while I kind of fart around with a pencil. Pre-done, you're going to want to get your sketch down onto your surface. So while I'm kind of chit-chatting, going through those materials, you can go ahead and do that. You can pick whatever eye you want. It could be a human eye, it could be a leopard eye, it could be anything. The um, I see here in chat, the reference photo has been dropped as well. You're more than welcome to directly copy that onto your materials, whatever you decide. This is for fun, it's nothing too crazy. So just, I say have fun and enjoy. Now off to the side here, you can see I have my palette paper. Now this here is Borden and Riley. It's a disposable palette paper. Um, admittedly, I am incredibly lazy, so cleaning off a palette at the end of every session just does not jive with me. Um, some of you may want to use a glass palette, a ceramic palette, whatever you decide is completely, probably honestly better than what I'm using. Um, probably easier to mix on whatever you decide is totally fine. This is the one I'm using here. Now, hopefully you can see my color palette. Most of my color palette for each of my acrylic paintings is going to be the same. So I have my titanium white, I have Mars black, I have burnt umber, burnt sienna, I have cadmium yellow, and I have phthalo blue. Those are pretty much the colors I use mostly for each of my wildlife paintings with the occasional cadmium red thrown in there as well for any pink elements but we're not going to need any shade of pink or red today as this leopard eye is blue and the majority of their fur is just shades of brown. So that's why we're working on this today. Um, so there's my palette and my paper. I'm gonna do my best to try to mix exclusively on the side you can see. If I'm mixing a large volume of paint, I'm going to move the palette over so you guys can see it a little bit better. In the top corner here, we have my very well loved and used um, <laughs> water container. Uh, this thing has seen uh, all of my paintings pretty much. It's probably time for a new one, but just some fresh clean water with some um, you know, nice little paper towel underneath to dry your brushes is going to be more than fine. Now here I have, and I'm trying not to make too much noise in the microphone. Um, they can be a little noisy. These are the brushes I'm going to use for today. Now, the thing about brushes is they are not, there is no law when it comes to art using brushes and acrylic. You can use whatever shape or size you feel comfortable using. So if there's a brush in this series here today that you're like, mm, Cassie, I don't really like that you know, shape. I'm not a big fan. You don't have to use it. You can replace it with another one, your favorite brush that you have, whatever you prefer, I say, you know, do what makes you happy and what makes you produce the best art. So I have here some different shapes. I have my round brush, which is going to be my detailer. I have my small filbert. This one here is a sleeper pick. I say a lot of people don't realize the sort of full potential that the filbert brushes have. And in the program, I do dive into these different shapes and the brush strokes. There's a brush stroke exercise that we do excuse me, that can actually show you the potential of these brushes and their versatility. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that today with the filbert. 
I have my liner. Now, this is embarrassing, okay? This liner brush is, it looks terrible. It has been through everything <laughs> <laughs> with me. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the brush tip is very sad. Um, at this point, it's, it's just a part of my kit now forever. So I'll show you the liner brush, which is very, very excellent and versatile for fine details, especially in wildlife like whiskers or sort of like eyebrow hairs. Really fine fur is excellent. I have the two blender sizes, the large blender and the small. This is an excellent sleeper pick as well. I'm going to show you those today. A large filbert, and then we have our large square. I may or may not have included this in the list to etcher. Sorry, Kathleen, in advance. I can't recall. But um, you can use whatever brush. I use this once throughout this demo, and that's it. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, so please, if you have any questions about what I've discussed so far, um, don't be shy, write in the chat, say hello, and um, yeah, just stop me at any time. I'm an open book and I'm happy to answer your questions. All right, so let's get painting, shall we? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this large square brush, and hopefully my camera is not too dark, please let me know but I'm gonna take this large square brush and I'm gonna fully dump this into my paint water. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get all these bristles really quite wet. I'm gonna load this brush up. And what we're doing first is we're gonna tone our canvas. Now, a lot of times, especially when you're starting out, you might just jump right into painting this right away on this white canvas. This canvas is pre-primed with gesso. I bought it from the store like this. So I technically don't have to do any sort of prep work before I start painting. However, there is a trick that I'm going to let you know called toning that's really going to help your vision and your ability to see the colors that you're mixing for your paintings. So I'm going to take my palette paper and I'm going to dive into burnt sienna and I'm just gonna drag this color down and I'm really gonna water this down. So I'm just gonna take some of this paint. Now you can see how thin this is. For my watercolorist in chat, you're going to recognize this consistency right away. And yes, you can use acrylic watered down. That is a huge myth in the art community that it is frowned upon using thin down acrylic, that something about the integrity of the paint is going to be poor, your paintings don't last. I am here to tell you that is a myth. It is a myth. You can water down acrylic as much as you want, however you want to, totally up to you. Now, what I've done here is I've really watered this down. I've loaded up my paintbrush. And what I'm going to do this part may be intimidating, maybe a little, a little scary, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cover over my entire sketch. Now I do recommend for your sketch that you're going to want to use a heavy enough pencil that when you brush this sort of toning burnt sienna color over top of your canvas, that your paint, or sorry, your pencil, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to shine through still despite the water and the paint being over top of it. So we're just gonna go ahead. Hopefully my camera is still in focus. Please behave today, camera. <laughs> there we go, might be a little better. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to cover over this entire sketch with a nice thin layer. Look at that already. So even just that nice, it's almost like the color of my desk at this point, just that nice, oh, thin, yeah. right? Color mixing, we also go into that as well. So this would be a good exercise actually. Um, but this is a perfect example of really how it tones down that contrast of that stark white canvas. So I've made this now, this beautiful burnt sienna. I'm gonna take a second to look at chat um, and I'm gonna let this dry. So the key here for toning your canvas is you want it to be 100% dry before you go into moving into the next step. So we're gonna take a second, I'm gonna wash out my brush here. And that is it for our square brush today. So uh, not super <laughs> important, you can use whatever brush you want. It had a quick cameo today in our lesson. Um, but otherwise it's done for the day. A short shift for our square brush. 
Okay. Uh, hello from Poland. Hello. Any tips? Whoops. Chat's moving here. Any tips on how to transfer a pick on the canvas or paper? Yes. So a great question. There's multiple ways or methods that you can do um, to get your sketch down onto your canvas. Number one, um, a lot of people, again, everyone's different. A lot of people may frown upon it, but tracing your subject onto your canvas is not a bad thing. It is not cheating. It took me a long time to realize this and a lot of research spent on YouTube with other sort of YouTube content creators that discuss this at length. So tracing your subject down onto your canvas, as long as the photograph you are using is open for everyone to use, so you're not infringing on any sort of copyright or anything like that, maybe it's a photo you took yourself and you're putting down onto your canvas, tracing is an excellent option that speeds up the process. You could do the grid method. For a small piece like this, um, I, I wouldn't say the grid method, just because it is a little bit more involved, there's math involved. So grid method may or may not be something that you wanna use for today, an example, but the grid method is an awesome technique a light uh, board or projector. So you can actually use a light board or projector to transfer your image. Um, I just got a projector for some larger pieces that I'm working on, and it really does speed up this process quite a lot. Or of course there's free handing as well. So you can use whichever makes you happy, whatever speeds up the process. And to be honest, as long as this first step meaning the sketch before the toning, as long as your sketch gets down onto your surface and you're comfortable and happy with the anatomy that you've been able to get, whether it's a bird, an eyeball, a human portrait, you know, as long as you're able to get that down and it looks like your subject and you yourself are comfortable, to me, that's all that matters. So I know it's a very long-winded explanation. That's me. Uh, Cassie, long-winded draws, that's literally me. Um, but as long as you have fun with what you're doing, that's all that matters. Long story short. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm seeing everyone come in. Hello. <laughs> I love what hey, you said, guys. Kathleen. You had one job today. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. It was the exit for our yeah. big brush today. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, I think we can... Let us know if you have any questions, but I um, might have a question for others, especially for complete beginners. Um, sure. I noticed that your wash is very even. Yes. And it's, um, how do I say, well, it's flat and it's even. Yes. So how do we achieve this? Because for some beginners, um, they might have varied um, pressures on the brushes yes. and you, ha you see a lot of brush strokes in um, your pieces, which sometimes you don't want. So how do you achieve that kind of flat, beautiful, yes. even wash? Excellent question. Um, and something I, I hate to say it comes with practice um, because I feel like that's such a cheap answer. First, number one would be practice, but also you can achieve some more evenness with your mixing of your paint, um, as well as the brush that you're using. So cameo number two to our square brush. Um, I need to give a little more love to our square here. Um, this brush really helps achieve that very sort of thin, even wash because of the size. So if you look and compare the size of this brush to the size of my canvas, I'm really only looking at maybe three, three and a half lengthwise brush strokes to achieve the entire surface of the canvas. So you're going to want to choose a brush. If I chose this brush in comparison, you can really see how that would take a long time but would also give you a lot of these, unless this is the style you're going for, it would give you a lot of kind of strange lines and clumps of paint forming together in your brush stroke that would kind of make it a little uneven. So by choosing a large enough brush, I like the square, you could use a filbert too, but um, the brush you choose really does help as well as, the evenness of your translucent paint. So your water to paint ratio is also going to affect how visible your sketch is, how marbled, we'll call it marbling, how marbled your paint is going to look on your canvas when it dries. The lighter I find you can see more of those sort of lines throughout or kind of uh, like pooling. 
Whereas if it's a little bit thicker and kind of like that perfect consistency, it kind of takes that wash away and makes it just a very thin acrylic paint. Hopefully that answers your question, but that's an excellent one to have. I think it does. Um, that absolutely makes sense. And I think it helps, especially complete beginners. Yes. Who are just, you know, figuring their way out. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. And I see um, Darth says practice makes perfect. It absolutely does. And that's why I always start off with that saying, I feel like it's such a cheap answer, but it's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. All right. So what I'm going to do now, once this has completely dried and you can just kind of tap a little, sometimes acrylic can get a little tacky. Um, but once you feel comfortable that it's dry, I'm going to use my smaller filbert brush. You can use a round filbert, whatever you prefer. And I'm going to dive straight into Mars Black. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start doing the outline of this entire eye. So I'm only going to paint the outline areas that I can see. For example, the outside of the eye, the spots, anything that I can see that has black paint or would be black paint. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start adding that in. And this acts as an outline for us, very similar to, let's say, a coloring book or um, our outline of our sketch. I'm basically trying to give myself a guide for my future self to paint this eyeball. So you can see here that I'm kind of just moving my way around using this black paint and I'm just going to chisel out my sketch. I'm essentially, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm essentially just finding my sketch lines underneath of this toned canvas. And I'm just going to make sure that their shape is accurate, making sure that it looks the way that I want it to before I start painting in any details. Now, something that I did want to mention, I know that I talked about it earlier, and please tell me if I'm like talking too fast. I get very excited about art. And then it's like a it's like a runaway train you just can't stop me. I'm just on a roll. Um, the filbert brush. So this is a perf perfect example of the capabilities of a filbert. So you can see here in this area down here, I did a very thick, broad brush stroke. But then in an area such as this one, I'm doing a very thin, wispy stroke with the very tip of this paintbrush. So these types of brushes are incredible for their versatility. I can get a really long, chunky stroke. I can get a very fine one. I can do some interesting flicks or little curves. It does an awesome job creating, let's be real, multiple brush strokes with one paintbrush. So if you don't have a, <clears throat> excuse me, if you don't have a filbert in your kit, I definitely would recommend it, especially if you're looking to paint with acrylic a little bit more. I definitely, definitely recommend adding one to your kit. Phenomenal tool to have. So I'm just going ahead here. And this stage doesn't have to be perfect. I used to get really, really tied up in all of these details. And the reality is this is just an outline. It is just a guide. I don't need to be perfect, especially on a smaller painting where I maybe am not going to spend as much time, a five by seven, a little study. You could just go ahead, add in the details that you can see, and then just paint over them after. How is everything looking so far? We can see everything looks good. Yeah, I, I think it's actually, yep. No Perfect. shadows so far. So good, all excellent. Good. All right. Uh, I just wanted to drop in and um, say, I think there are a couple of questions in the chat saying, sure. how do we access this afterwards? Um, so this is actually recorded. And if you feel like you want to go back to this recording afterwards, um, this will be available on our YouTube channel. So that's Etra Studio. 
So you can feel free to go back to this recording after this live stream ends. But also if, if you are here with us and you wanted to join us live, feel free to stick along also to, towards the end because we are going to be doing a giveaway later on. So that's going to be a perks of it. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> Everyone loves giveaways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Free art materials. <laughs> that already looks great. Thank you, Jaxi. Thank you guys. Thank you for being here. It is so good to see you all. Some of you I've seen before many times. And if we are meeting for the first time, thank you for being here. And uh, is anyone painting along today or working with acrylic? I know that. Yeah, that is cool. well, yeah absolutely. I know that um, acrylic is relatively new to Etcher. So I'm glad to see that a lot of people are, you know, excited about this course and wanting to try it. Acrylic has changed my life. So I want everyone to feel the same, you know, sort of elating feeling that I do when I paint with it. I'm new here. Hi, Darn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and she, uh, Darth has mentioned something interesting in the chat. Um, she feels like this medium is very forgiving um, because if you make a mistake, you can let it dry and paint over it. And I love that she said you have to let it dry before you actually paint over it because yes. some people might be, you know, <laughs> you can just yes. layer on top of another. But yeah. Absolutely, yes. Uh, something that we cover in the course um, is basically, well, really all about acrylic, but you know, the dry time, wet on wet blending, you know, dry, dry blending, wet on dry, all of these different techniques that you can use, um, you know, to create artwork in your own way. So wet on wet blending can really work for you well if you're making clouds, as an example, really using wet paint and kind of mushing it together to create, you know, new shades of blue. And there's endless possibilities. And yes, the forgivingness of acrylic is wonderful as well. Um, you know, if you make a mistake, something doesn't go right to plan, as we know in art and in the art world, nothing seems to go right sometimes. <laughs> so it's a great way to be able to go back, fix things that you don't like, um, and adjust it. Patience, yes. You're painting along with acrylic. Awesome, excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Cassie, I've noticed for the fur above the eye, like directly above yes. it, it's it's a little lighter. Yes. How are you to achieve that? So excellent. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for bringing this up. So an excellent thing with acrylic, and we are kind of, you know, we are kind of tiptoeing around it with the dry on dry. Um, using your brush with minimal amount of paint on it. So this is where your paper towel or your towel is really gonna come in handy. What you can do is you can dab off, see all this extra paint that's coming off of my paintbrush? This is without that's water. Bad. Yes, so these oh. brush bristles um, really do hold quite a lot of acrylic and it can be quite thick and opaque. So by sort of dabbing this off or even on your palette paper, you can kind of wipe it. You can see here, the consistency between this and this is very different. So as this brush has sort of dried, the paint is less the volume. I can use a very minimal amount of, of paint pressure or pen pressure on my paintbrush. And I can go ahead and I can create these little marks that are visible in this leopard's fur, but are not as opaque or as noticeable as these sort of dark spots. So the spots in the outline, I want those to be the most opaque, um, as that's our guide. But these are also going to act as fur indicators. So this section here, this right here is going to be much lighter than the surrounding area. I will use these light paint strokes, very minimal. When I'm talking light, I'm talking, I am just kiss, a little kiss. I'm just kissing the canvas very, very lightly with this paintbrush and I'm creating these markings. Dry brush, minimal amount of paint, very light pressure, and that's gonna allow you to sort of draw with your acrylic without committing to that very sort of large amount of paint volume, very opaque spots. So hopefully that helps. Excellent question. 
I can I just say I like your verb kiss the canvas. Yes. I mean, that's just perfect. Just a little kiss. Just, <laughs> just a little. <laughs> that's just the sweetest, but it's actually a perfect way to describe it. Yes. So yes. I'm gonna very, use that. Very good, good. Okay. I'm like, hopefully that's a good analogy. But yeah, it's very subtle. You know, we're not committing hundred percent yet. We're a little, we're a little shy still. So just like just a little, you know. <laughs> Perfect. And there you can see that really big difference. And again, I am going to sound like a broken record. Practice. You let listen. Unless you are some acrylic artist reincarnated where you are an immediate pro, you are going to do a lot of practicing and you are going to make a lot of mistakes. I wish, and I do actually somewhere in this studio, have one of my first eye paintings. And let me tell you, it's not great. <laughs> I've painted a lot of eyeballs in my time and, you know, to get to this point. So it's going to take a lot of practice. You're going to fumble through. You're going to make mistakes. You might even throw out some canvases. I have plenty in my day. And that's okay. That's completely normal. <laughs> and Ruth mentioned, right now I can imagine every artist kissing their canvas. <laughs> <laughs> I do not recommend. <laughs> I do have to say I'm like the art safety mom on the internet. I'm like, please be careful with your art supplies. <laughs> uh, I do right. not recommend actually physically kissing it. <laughs> Just with your brush. <laughs> That's a good point, though. Like, when, how do we know, um, like, in general, what kind of paints are safe to use? You know, oh. uh, what should be, we be aware of as beginners, you know, when you're yes. on with the okay. paints in the market? So, some, and I, uh, Kathleen, bless your heart, because I'm already half an hour in, girl, and I feel like I'm not even close to being done this painting. So, we might be here all day. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Um, <That's> okay. <laughs> uh, so some little housekeeping rules, side note, I'm letting this black dry before I do anything else. This is a good time for our art safety talk. Uh, we do talk about this as well in the program more at length. Um, but first safety rules, I know you guys are gonna groan and be upset with me. No food or drink in your studios, y'all. Um, a lot of times, for example, acrylic paints, they will dry with air. So when the paints evaporate and all the, you know, the evaporation process happens, those VOCs are out into the air. Now, most paints, beginner, student grade, etc., typically, and I'm using air quotes, are non-toxic. It does not mean you should, you know, put fistfuls of this paint into your mouth and eat it. You should not drink your paint water, of course. So coffee away from your paint water. Um, but most times, generally, for general use, safe usage, they're non-toxic. Um, once you start getting into the professional grade of things, there are some paints that may include, for example, cadmium, which is, of course, toxic to us if ingested in your eyes, etc. So I always say general rule of thumb, food and drink out of the studio. Get it out. <laughs> No eating, no drinking. A quick sip is fine, okay? Uh, you know, you're not going to keel over and something's going to happen to you. But just generally as safekeeping, I always say out of the studio. Um, I use Grumbacker Academy Acrylic for all of my paintings. They actually provide a material list online that you can actually see what the paint is made out of. And for example, like prolonged usage, 60, 70 years of using this what's going to happen to you? And it says, you know, nothing, no findings, it's non-toxic, etc. So I always say, do your research before you dive into a specific brand. Um, I always say, if you can invest in a little bit more of a higher quality grade acrylic, um, I would say do so. If you're really invested in painting with acrylic, the better the paint, the better it is for you in terms of physically and in terms of the quality you're producing. A lot of times cheaper paints are thinner. So you're actually going to use more paint of a cheaper brand. So you're actually going to spend more rebuying this paint because you're going through it so much rather than just using a higher grade acrylic kind of right off the bat. Um, so, and then everything else in terms of like your canvas and paint brushes, everything else will be fine for you. Mostly it's just that paint. Try to keep it off your hands if you can. Some artists decide to wear gloves. Just if you see yourself get a, you know, some speckles on there, wash them off and you'll be good to go.
but excellent question. I love talking art safety because in my opinion, it is not talked about enough in the industry. So I definitely think, you know, do your research and just pick something you're comfortable working with. All right. I'm just chatty Kathy here today. We're going to get into, <laughs> we're going to add in some color now. Um, so here you can see, I'll, I'll kind of, if I can find you, there we go. This is what we look at for our first kind of three steps. Number one, our sketch. Number two, tone your canvas. Number three, we're going to work in this outline with pure black Mars black paint. Um, every artist is different. Some artists don't want to do the outline. You don't have to. It's entirely up to you. Now what we're going to do, and I see uh, Jaxi put this in chat as well, painting from dark to light. Yes, we are going to work now on our preliminary layer, and that is going to be um, working from dark to light back to front. So I'm going to find all of the dark areas of this eye, the eye itself and the surrounding area. I'm going to block those in. And then I'm going to work my way up to a lighter layer at the very top. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to get started with some base layers. I'm going to begin with that gorgeous blue, and then we're going to work on the area surrounding. All right. So this should be good. I'm going to use my bigger filbert brush just to save me some time. Remember, I'm lazy. So the less time I spend painting this blue eye, the happier I am. So I'm going <laughs> to mix this blue together. And I'm mixing phthalo blue and titanium white together. And this is going to give me this beautiful shade of blue for my base. Now I want to kind of make this about a 50% blue. So I don't want it too light, but I don't want it too dark either. So a nice middle tone, and that's where we're going to start essentially. Now I'm gonna add in just a little bit of this yellow. And again, we don't want green, so I'm adding in just a little bit of a brush tip. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's how much yellow um, that I'm adding in. So, so it's also just a kiss. Just, <laughs> just, just a kiss of yellow in our in our paint mixture. <laughs> exactly. That's gonna be like our slogan now for this program. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna use that in your vocabulary. Good, so. good. So I have my blue. I've loaded up these brush bristles. I'm really, really loading this brush up. And I'm gonna go ahead now. Watch the magic. Okay, this is gonna be where you see your toning come in handy. If this was a white canvas, this would not have the same effect. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop this blue and I'm going to follow my outline and already look at that stunning blue against that really nice burnt sienna orange. That's gorgeous. And this not only visually is it is it beautiful, it's also going to help your eyes. So a lot of times we don't realize as artists working on a white surface like a canvas or you know a watercolor block it really can have quite a contrast so it's very stark to our eyes and it's hard to see but now that I've toned it and I've kind of given it a little bit of like a mid-tone it could be gray it could be burnt sienna what uh, you know whatever color you want to use um, it's just softening that for me and it's allowing me to see actually what color in their truest form that I'm mixing for my painting. So I would know right away if this blue was incorrect, if it was, you know, not the color that I was looking for. I would have known that way sooner on the burnt sienna canvas than I would have on just a regular white canvas. That's really interesting. Is it, does it also affect if you have like a different undertone if it's not burnt sienna, say for example? Yes, like yes. I've done, I find normally with, for example, um, like moodier paintings with really dark lighting, I'll tend to use like a burnt umber, which is a more cool brown than a sort of red um, warm brown. And I find that that will then change the way the paints look as well. It's, it's, I don't, again, I'm not a scientist, so I don't really know the scientific explanation behind it only through my experience using it, that it just makes for such a huge difference and even this contrast like this sort of neutral brown to the it just pops like it just really just springs off the canvas 
I'm washing my brush now because we're going to switch gears here. So I'm going to let, and this is the beauty of acrylic. I'm going to let that blue eye dry. But while I'm doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and work on the dark areas of this leopard's fur. So I'm kind of switching gears, keeping my productivity high. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of focus on another area while that area is drying. So I'm just washing off my brush. And speaking of washing of brush, I'm just yes. going to insert this question. Um, any good tips on keeping your paintbrush clean, says Dark? Yeah. yeah, so for me personally, I use brush cleaner at the end of every session. Um, it comes in a small disc. Uh, I think it's called Masters, if I remember correctly. I bought it at Michael's, but you can get it at any craft or art store, I'm pretty sure, or online. And basically what I do is it's a puck. And you just swirl your brush in it. It's a really nice creamy soap. Um, and then you rinse it off and let your paintbrushes dry. And that soap alone is what has sort of conditioned my brushes to stay in their proper form. And we'll talk about this in the course as well. Stays in their proper form, returns their bristles to its proper sort of positioning. Um, don't use my liner brush as an example. <laughs> This thing is very sad, but it's also probably at this point five years old and I smush this thing around. So it's not perfect. It's not going to keep your brushes perfect forever, but it's a great way to extend their life. So proper brush care after washing, drying your brushes um, or mild dish soap as well. That will work too. It doesn't have to be anything crazy or expensive. And just remembering to not leave your paintbrushes in your paint water. So I know this is a big one. Um, a lot of people, when they start painting, they leave them sitting in their paint water brushed down. And this will actually curve your brush bristles upwards and ruin the glue that is in the ferrule, which is going to keep your wood brush uh, handle to the brush tip. So this actually can totally fall off if submerged in water for too long. So um, little things that you can do in practice to kind of keep your brushes clean and the lasting you a long time, because let's be real, they're expensive, y'all. We all know art stuff out there is expensive and we wanna use our you know, kit for as long as we can. All right, so what I'm doing here, oh, sorry, Kathleen, didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, I was just saying, I just said, gotcha, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what we're doing now is I'm going to mix, and I'll show you guys here, I'm gonna mix our um, yellow, our burnt sienna, burnt umber, Mars black, and white together. So basically our whole kit. And I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the shadows of our leopard eye. All right, now I'm gonna water this down a little bit. I don't want it to be super, super opaque. But I want it dark enough that we can still see it. And if you cover over your outline, that is totally fine. You're going to see here in a moment. Yeah, that's good. All right. Testing my color here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add in some darker areas to our fur. And as I mentioned, if you cover over your outline, that's okay because we're actually going to essentially redo those at the very end of the painting. So not to worry if you're like, oh, I just did all this work and now I'm going to cover over it, Cassie. Like, what are you doing? It's all part of the process. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm finding all of the dark areas of this eye that I can see. Any shadow, any, you know, dark spot of fur. I'm just going ahead and adding that in. Now you'll see in some areas... I'm going to avoid completely, for example, this area here, um, other than a little bit of a dark shadow here, because this is all really light fur. So I'm just gonna go ahead and completely avoid that area and just go ahead and leave that blank. So even this little bit of a shadow, you can kind of see where I'm going here with this fur texture and how we achieve the look of fur. Perfect. 
And I always say sometimes with acrylic, especially when painting, you know, wildlife and such, less is more. So we don't want to cover over all of our hard work. I should also get that on a t-shirt because I say that quite frequently in my videos and <laughs> with the etcher class. Um, you know, we don't want to cover over all of our hard work. We want to have some of that information still shining through and leaving that base layer. All right, so I'm going to take this color that I just made and I'm going to add white and I'm going to add some yellow to it. And this is going to be our sort of light cream that we're going to add into those areas that we have left open. And you're also going to see some magic happen with this as well um, because light colors really react well on the toned canvas. So we're just gonna go in here. I think we need a little bit more white. So white and yellow. And I always do a spot test, so that's totally fine because acrylic, we can go over it, not a problem. All right. We need some more white in this mixture. And this is a perfect example of, I've been painting for a very long time with acrylic. And you can see here that I still have to adjust my colors. So I went back in two, three, four times to get the proper color mixture. And I've been painting for a long time. So it happens and that's all part in the process. All right, so we're just, see here, that sort of beautiful sort of cream color just also plays with that burnt sienna and just bounces right off our canvas. Mm -hmm. Now I haven't also changed my brush at all. So we're still using this filbert, this large filbert. And you can see that I'm still kind of being a little messy with it. I'm not too concerned about covering over anything. I'm not, you know, worried about, oh shoot, you know, I went into the, the outline, we're gonna fix it. So don't stress. And you can see here that I'm leaving some of this area. This is very important, especially when painting wildlife or fur, anything with texture like this. I'm leaving some of that burnt sienna tone underneath to shine through. So I don't wanna cover over everything like I've done here where it's just a pure opaque block of sort of cream. I wanna make sure that I have some of that left to shine through so that it's starting to create the layering of our fur that we're looking for. That's genius. It, you know what? Work smarter, not harder, baby. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> let the paint do it and, you know, let it just kind of uh, work for you. Just same with your brushes, just kind of have fun with it. And I am all about simple, less work, less effort. <laughs> there we go. Now this big area here, we can do a little bit more of a thicker brush stroke. And all these layers are essentially at this stage is a guide. It does not have to be perfect. And it took me a long time to kind of grasp this as an acrylic artist is it does not have to be perfect right away. This layer is just giving my future self a guide of where dark fur starts and light fur ends and you know all that kind of information, just enough so that I have it and I can you know make adjustments later on and kind of refine things later. So this is just a block in stage, locking in those sort of thick areas of color that you can see, and then we're gonna refine them way later and hopefully sometime today. <laughs> there we go. Great. So I think that's a good start for our base. I wanna jump into some of that eyeball now, the sort of main event. The rest of the stuff around it is, you know, it just adds to it, but it's not the superstar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the backup dancers and all. Exactly. It's it's the whole ensemble, but we really want the main event. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to clean off that brush since we're switching gears here to work with blue. 
And once I wash my brush off, I kind of rinse it in the water. I'm just drying it off on my paper towel. And I know Darth had mentioned about cleaning brushes and that's also part of it that kind of keeps them nice and clean and to their proper shape is just kind of washing them off, drying them on the paper towel and then setting them aside. All right, so the fun part for this is really going to be to start to add an in information to this eye. Now, this eye is really quite dark. It's this beautiful sort of dark blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blender brush and I'm going to remix the blue color that I made. So that's sort of 50% blue, but I'm going to add in some Mars black to it. So I'm going to darken it up can you see those? Oh, oh sorry. yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> I know sometimes we run out of room here. Perfect, okay, so I'm gonna dive into blue. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a little bit of white, not a lot, and I'm going to dive into black as well. So we want this to be a sort of dark navy color. There we go, that would be helpful. And I'm just mixing those together adding in some water and you can kind of see that consistency changing a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this consistency. So very similar to our toning um, paint color, and I'm going to add this into our eye. Now with the blender brushes, they hold a lot of water. So I'm going to sort of, whoops, I just, you know, the classic stuck my hands in my <laughs> paint powder. Um, I'm going to just quickly dab some of this excess. You can really see a lot of this coming off. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add in this dark shadow. And I'm going to find all of the dark blue in this eye that I can. And just as we did with our sort of brown and sort of cream layers, this is going to be the guide for us later on to add in this shadow a little bit more opaque. It's just a nice way to kind of build up these layers. Here I'm going to add in some of that texture. A lot of times these animal eyes have these beautiful sort of lines throughout. And then normally they're darker sort of along the top as they kind of have these sort of little like hooded eyelids. So a lot of times the light doesn't kind of penetrate this area. It's usually only along the bottom. There we go. There. I can understand how why you used like a blender brush, but um, for someone, say for example, who has just a flat brush or other brushes, yes, do you think this is also to you? Okay, gotcha. yeah, oh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. With your let's say your round or your filbert or whatever you're using, um, you may have a little bit more. Uh, you may have to be a little bit more controlled in your brush stroke since the paint is really watered down. You may have to work on your control or your pressure a little bit. Um, the way the blenders are designed is they're kind of like these round sort of almost like, like a tulip kind of uh, shape. And so it allows me to really press and move the paint. Whereas with a regular brush, it's going, the water in the paint is just going to kind of seep out as you press down on it. So a little bit more control um, for your pen pressure or your paint pressure will be helpful. Um, but definitely you can use this opaque, watered down, whatever brush you want, you can achieve this look as well. Great question. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. Um, Again, we wanna make sure that this is completely dry before we go in with another layer. So what I can do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of refine the fur a little bit further with a smaller brush. So I have my smaller filbert, or you can use a round or whatever you have available. And I'm just gonna go ahead, and hopefully you guys can see this, I'm going to kind of dive back into this darker brown color that thankfully is still wet on my palette. And I'm going to add in just a touch of black. And then I can add in a little bit of white if I want to kind of bulk it up a little bit. 
and I'm going to take this brown and black and I'm just going to work my way around my canvas adding in some darker areas of fur. So there's a lot of darker areas here, which is what we initially sketched in with our very light Mars black, um, and then down in this area as well. So while this is drying, we're gonna multitask. Again, if you wanna focus on one aspect or one element at a time, you absolutely can. There's no rules to art, it's whatever makes you happy. But for the sake of today's demo and keeping time kind of <laughs> on time, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add those in. And a lot of times, specifically with the leopard fur, is you'll notice that a lot of these sort of darker brown areas tend to extend from the spots. So the spots are almost fading out into the rest of the pattern and kind of get a little bit faded. There we go. So I'm just kind of fading these spots out. And already oh. you can see just by adding in that nice little bit of, you know, fur, a little bit more color, you can already start to see this fur evolving into what it eventually will look like. I'm gonna add in some here as well. And I'm just, I'm kissing the canvas very, very lightly with this brush. <laughs> and I'm just adding in these light little paint strokes. How's everyone doing so far? Doing okay? I know we're, you know, again, with these demos, we have a certain amount of time. So I know I'm kind of moving through this painting, but let me know if, if you're good, everything's good. Yeah, let us know if... Um, for some who are following along, maybe you can't type. Okay, we understand, but <laughs> um, yeah, for those who are watching along, um, feel free to let us know if you have any questions. I have reserved um, two questions that we can ask towards the end. Um, so, yeah, let's see. I think we can ask just one. Are you also doing an advanced uh, beginner or intermediate acrylic tutorials? <laughs> oh, um, yeah. That will okay. Be interesting. <laughs> yeah. So currently right now um, we have the introduction to acrylics um, with Etcher. And uh, I have also a snow leopard class on Etcher Studios as well. Um, so currently we have the beginner. Um, I would definitely say I would love to, um, especially maybe covering something like this, diving into fur a little bit more or, you know, some sort of more intermediate advanced techniques. Um, I, of course, don't have the uh, <laughs> the say or the power to be able to do that. Um, that is definitely an etcher question for sure. But I always say like in your feedback um, or I know that you guys etcher is phenomenal. You know, if you ever want to see something, I would definitely just say ask for sure. Um, your feedback is definitely valuable. And I, I, Again, I don't work for Etcher. I work alongside Etcher, but I know as a company, they are amazing and they just want to provide things that people want to see. So the more people who ask, the more you know chances that that program will be developed and created with their phenomenal artists and um, you know giving other artists an opportunity to collaborate as well. So um, I definitely say throw it out there, let people know, and uh, you know maybe one day I will for sure. That would be awesome. Yeah, I, I, I love that you said that. So more comments, more feedback we hear from people. We it's definitely love to cater that. Huge. Yeah. I mean, I used to teach um, college, you know, art classes. And um, I would always tell my students, you know, whether it's about me, good or bad, about the program, the course, whatever, you know, really just be open and honest with your feedback um, because things are not developed or designed or changed without it. So if you want to see something, you know, by all means, let people know. Um, if we don't know, we can't change it or anything like that. So I always say good or bad feedback um, is always super valuable and helps kind of tailor these programs to what artists want to see. All right. 
So while we've been chit-chatting, I've added in some of this sort of extra layering to our eye. Um, now, what I'm doing is I'm testing to see if this is dry. It looks good. It's still a little tacky, but I think it's definitely workable. What we're going to do now is we're going to add in another layer of shadow to this eye. So we really want to go as dark as possible and then bring back some of those light blues at the end. So I know we talked about Blender versus Filbert for this section. I'm going to show you how to use a regular, um, I was gonna say toothbrush, what time is it? A regular paintbrush <laughs> um, <laughs> with this technique instead of the blender. I know everyone may not have a blender brush, so I'm gonna show you that um, you can use a regular one as well. Now what I'm doing in my paint mixture is I've got the same exact pile that still is wet and I'm adding in a little bit more Mars Black and a little bit more phthalo Blue. And I'm just darkening up that mixture even by, you know, 15, 20%. And then I'm just gonna go in over top. Again, we can do a little bit of a test. Okay, not too dark. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in this dark wash over top. And if you ever find that it's a little bit too dark, which can happen, you can just dab off some of your brush on your paper towel and then come back in with a little bit of a dryer brush. And that will kind of help you achieve the look that you're going for. And I'm kind of fading this out a little bit. You're, I noticed you're putting these darker um, shade within those, you know, already a little darker shade, but like the midtones yes. for the blue. So, yeah. Yes. Um, it's all about layering. Um, again, I'm, I'm not a, a pro in watercolor, but I know a lot of you may watercolor here. Um, but it's, it's kind of the same of really using your layering to your advantage, um, being patient, allowing for that dry time when needed, um, but then also kind of jumping in with some color when it's still, you know, not 100% dry. So it's it's kind of learning and, and having fun with the layering and, you know, all of those different aspects of acrylic. And it will be a bit of an adjustment, but I'm just kind of adding in all the dark sort of shadows where I can see them a layer at a time. All right, so I'm just kind of doing this little sort of rim of the eyeball down towards the bottom. And I'm using the really flat section of the filbert. So the very, very tip of this. And you can see that I'm kind of extending it beyond into some of that black outline. And that's totally fine too. I'm just gonna add that in and we're gonna let this dry. So I think this, we're, you know, we're at a pretty good stage here. You can see I've added that in. It's okay if you've got some of this marbling happen, that's totally normal. Um, we can always go in and adjust that later on. But I think what we've got so far is, um, you know, working quite well. So I'm just gonna clean off my brush. I'm gonna move my chair here for a moment so I can stand. This is the cutest eye I've ever seen. Ah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, the Amur leopard eyes, and I could be saying that wrong, Amur, Amur, um, are so beautiful. They're just stunning. For some reason, they're, I feel like they're hypnotic. Or yes, <laughs> yes. <Babies. laughs> no, I, I completely agree. 1000%. It's just something I think it's the blue. It's it's very rare to mm. see, you know. That's true, especially in nature. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So while that's drying, I think what we can do is I'm going to add in. So I'm going to take that blue color we just used and I'm going to add in a little bit of white to it. And it's going to turn to this sort of very dark, um, kind of like cool gray, like it, it kind of turned to like a cool gray, dark blue color. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to add this into sections of our eye, but the outline. So down below, a lot of times this area turns and becomes very reflective. And the reflection is usually blue. In most wildlife paintings that I've done, this color has always been blue. 
So we're gonna go ahead and add that in. And it's just gonna span pretty much this sort of darker area here and then into this area that I've left open. And this is going to really start to bring this eye to life as well. This is the rubbery part around the eye. And a lot of times this will have, you know, highlights, moisture, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it kind of, it makes the eye sit in the face um, a lot better and kind of looks more natural. So super important to add this in um, as well to this section of the eye. There. So you can see that the eye looks a little bit more seated now. It looks a little bit more kind of flush to the canvas. I'm going to wash my brush. It's still a little tacky. But I think what we can do is we're going to add in a little bit of a highlight. So I'm taking phthalo blue. I'm going to mix it right here, actually. Phthalo blue and titanium white together. And looking beside on my palette paper, that's our original blue. I want this blue to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to add in titanium white until these two paint blobs look a little bit different. And this is going to be the beginning of our highlights. So I'm just gonna add in more titanium white until I reach a color that I think is pretty close. I think we're getting there. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add that in towards the bottom rim, and I'm using my filbert. Yeah, perfect. I don't want it too dark or too light. And I'm just going to slowly start to add in this detail. And the important part with acrylic is to really make sure that you leave some of that information still in your painting. So we don't want to cover over all of our shadow, all of those markings with this new light color, because then we should have probably just painted it that color from the very beginning. We want to make sure that we have this layering happening. So the nice, really sort of two, three, four, five different layers to achieve this sort of round eye, this really nice glossy eyeball. And some areas are going to be more highlighted than others. There we go. And I'm going to add in a little bit more titanium white. I'm going to add this into some areas and I'm just lightly kissing this canvas little little smooch just kind of <laughs> add this in sound, it's, sound it's evolving still. it's evolving yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add this in I'm going to bring that up towards the top now even just that little bit you can kind of see what I'm with the, you know, the mood I'm going for, the the look that I'm going for, this sort of glossy, um, really nice 3D eyeball. And what a little bit of a highlight will do. It's it's really quite amazing how it sort of moves and reacts to your canvas and really kind of brings things together. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Phthalo blue and some Mars black. We're going to make that wash again. If it's still active on your palette, you can go ahead and use that. Or if you have to remake it, you're just going to mix phthalo blue and black together and water down your brush. And I'm going to add in the darkest. I think we need a little bit more Mars black. I'm going to make the darkest area on this eyeball towards the top. I'm just going to add in a little bit more. And it's going to look almost at some point the same sort of uh, color or tone of the pupil. So we want it to be really, really quite dark. 
How are we doing for time, Kathleen? Are we doing all right? Yeah, I think um, we are okay. Oh, we've got okay. like a few more minutes left. That's that's fine. Perfect. Um, let us know if you have any questions as well, which you may want to reserve for our Q&A at the end. Um, and it could be anything about the course, upcoming course. Um, it could be anything about materials, any tips and tricks, you know. Um, so, yeah, let us know. Perfect. All right. So what I did is I just added in some Mars black paint to the pupil um, because I want that still to be able to stand out. And I've added in a little bit of Mars black to this top section just to kind of define it a little bit further. What we're going to do is we're going to finish off here. I know we're at over an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish off the one of the most important aspects of this painting, and that's going to be the catch light. So the catch light and whether you paint humans, whether you paint animals, whether you are interested in photography, et cetera, et cetera, it all is the same is the catch light is the thing that gives your eye life or, you know, looking at a portrait or a photograph. That is where we connect as humans is looking at the eye and seeing or not it's realistic. And we kind of, um, the catch light is super important to that. Right now, this looks, you know, we're starting to see this, this eye come together and it looks like an eye, but until we add in that catch light, it just won't look 100% real to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our detailer brush and I'm going to dive in to this very light color that we mixed earlier, phthalo blue and white together. And I'm gonna add in a lot more white and we're gonna work on that catch light. And again, that's something that you just, again, I'm not a scientist, so I don't understand why, but with that catch light, whether it's photography, a painting, we resonate with it. And that's kind of what the, you know, is the thing that we see first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this detailer and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in this catch light. Now, not all the time, our catch lights perfectly round. So sometimes they will have different shapes. Um, they will be like, you know, squares or rectangles, depending on what's reflecting off of them, that is going to change the way that your catch light looks and the overall shape. And I'm gonna add in some, sometimes they have these nice little sort of circle catch lights. Sometimes they're a different color. This one's actually a little bit darker on this side. So I'm going to jump into my darker blue and I'm gonna kind of add that in. And then what I like to do sometimes is I actually like to water down my paintbrush. So I've, I've jumped into the water and I'm just gonna fade this out a little. So I'm just gonna Take this water, I'm going to kind of brush it over this opaque acrylic, and I'm going to just extend it. See how it kind of faded that out, um, and it kind of just reduced the opacity a little bit? I can drag that wherever I want, and that's going to allow me to kind of soften these details and kind of just have fun with paint. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. It brings me a little bit to kind of like a watercolor type feel. So I can just go ahead, I can extend this one out as well and kind of fade that together. And this is going to create that sort of glossiness that we're looking for. That just brings it to a whole new level. Just when I thought it can get better. Like Thank you. Yeah. And that's exactly what we want to see with that catch light is really, you know, I could jump right in. I'll, I'll show it to you guys, but jump right in with like a blob of, of white, you know, like it really just brings it together. Um, and to, like you're saying a whole other level of realism and, you know, uh, like I would say eye catching this. I know that sounds weird, but like for someone to walk by and go, Oh my gosh, like it just draws you right in. And that's what we're kind of looking at here. So um, you can tell me, Kathleen, I think, you know, if I were to refine this any further, we might be here till next week. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, you know, oh I, think, I think that's probably a good place to kind of end off with a mm. sort of really nice fleshed out, you know, leopard eye and kind of looking and working through all of our different techniques and brushes. But, you know, you let me know and I will, you know, paint some more or hang around, whatever we are feeling. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. I think that is a beautiful piece that we have right here. And for those who have followed along, again, feel free to post your work and tag Cassie either on Instagram um, or uh, you can also tag Etcher Studio. So that's Etcher underscore studio so that we can share your works and we can also see it. Um, if you're also part of our private Facebook group, which is Etcher Studio Fam, um, it's a free group. Um, open to anyone, whichever art journey, um, whatever art part of your art journey you're in, be it, be it a beginner um, or an advanced learner, this is a safe space for you to share your works. Um, and yeah, feel free to share your works there as well. Um, or you can also just message Cassie if you feel like you're too shy still to post your works in a whole wide world. That's totally okay. Feel free to send um, Cassie a message if that is something that's more comfortable for you. Um, all right, let's proceed with the questions. I think some people were asking about, um, I think I've already asked it though or earlier, um, but let me just get back track through some of this sure. question. Um, <laughs> this one's funny. Ever thought about selling your paint blobs? <laughs> Oh, um, you know what? It's interesting. Probably not on the disposable palette, but when I did have a peelable one, it would make some really cool like mosaic kind of artwork. Once you were done painting, you could kind of, you know, scratch off a corner and sort of tear it all off. It would be very interesting to see that in a more, you know, practical <laughs> type situation with art. But me personally, no, but maybe that's a cool endeavor for someone in chat today. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we always do two pieces of artwork, especially like acrylic painters, because we've got like the yes. palette. So your palette, your <laughs> um, paper, anything can be a piece of art. Absolutely. And sometimes it's even better. Why do you feel like that that's kind of the, the case sometimes? <laughs> true, true. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you ever name your paintings of the animals that you paint? So Darth was, I think she named um, this piece Stella. So, oh, that, perfect. That, that makes sense. <laughs> I love that. Um, I love that. Thank you, Darth. Yeah. Um, any, uh, I, I guess, any, do, do you form any attachments to your pieces, I guess? And then, I guess, when it comes to attachments, one of those, uh, we're, we're talking about naming them. So, do you also kind of like feel that kind of sense? Yes, yes, for each piece. <laughs> yes, uh, there are some pieces where a name just jumps right out at you right away, and you're like, That's the one. Um, you know, the last one that I just completed were two field mice together, um, and the perfect pair like just popped into my head. I'm like, That's a great title, <laughs> and it kind of stuck throughout the entire painting. Um, and then there's others where at the very end, I'm like, What do I call this? other than like Leopard One, you know, or like. <laughs> tiger study too Love you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of you know it's sometimes difficult sometimes it comes right away sometimes I give them more human-like names so I actually went through a period in my art where everything was and I went through the alphabet you know Apollo Arlo you know I would kind of go through the sort of alphabet and pick more human-like names um but yeah I kind of just go with the feeling <laughs> Okay, um, I guess we're persistent with any beginner intermediate classes. Um, Dale's asking, so I think I can link some of the classes that Cassie has with Etcher Studio. Um, but I think Cassie also has her own YouTube channel. Um, is that right, Cassie? Yes, yes. So if I can do a shameless plug for a minute. But yes, I do have um, a YouTube channel where I cover a wide variety of sort of art content, I will say is like a, an umbrella, um, ranging from, you know, follow step by step tutorials of lions and tigers to more of like an art business side of like how I became a full time artist to how you can too, um, those kinds of 
you know, content and videos. Um, and so it's kind of a wide variety. Um, and like I had mentioned earlier um, to you guys in Chad and Kathleen that your feedback for Etcher is incredibly important. So if you enjoyed your time here today and you'd like to see more from me on Etcher's platform, whether it be an advanced tutorial of some sort or something specific, um, they'd love to hear about it. And I would love to hear about it too. I'm always eager to, you know, hear feedback, good or bad. Um, and so that would be my recommendation is to let them know. Um, and then otherwise message me privately. I can share with you YouTube, et cetera, whatever, you know, you prefer. Gotcha. Thank you so much. And I'm just dropping in the email where you can reach us if you have any um, suggestions. If you want more of Cassie, feel free to shoot us a message at hello at etrastudio.com and uh, we'll definitely consider that. So the more um, requests, well, the more that we'll cater them. So yeah. Go shoot that message. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's totally, it's so valuable. Okay, and speaking of feedback, um, I, I just remember that we can, uh, for for those who just came in today, um, again, Cassie's course is already up on our website, um, and this course is open for complete beginners, and I, I cannot emphasize this, but Cassie has jam-packed all information in all of these session and she's strived so hard to pretty much um load every session with a lot of information i'm not kidding literally a lot of <laughs> information um i always but say it, like it's a good thing sorry to interrupt i always say like buckle in buckle in <laughs> get a drink get a snack not in your studio but you know just buckle in and get ready because it is a ride it is a ride <laughs> You're in for a treat, literally. And um, the, the lessons that you've learned today, that's just an overview. I mean, you've learned a lot today. What I mean, I you definitely can learn more during the course. Cassie will go through each and every art materials and supplies and what it does. And then you mentioned, um, Cassie mentioned earlier about brushstrokes techniques and exercises that you're going to be doing. And for each of those four sessions, you will have a homework where you can um, do this at your own time, at your own pace. And you can also post these homeworks as well on our Facebook group or on Instagram, um, or also on our website. There's kind of, it's kind of like a Facebook interface as well. And yeah, so it's gonna start from April 17th, that's next week, and will end at May 8th. This is gonna happen every 12 p.m. Eastern time. And after those four sessions, we'll be giving you a break um, a few weeks so that you can work on one final piece, which you can serve as a candidate for the live feedback session. It's it's an exciting moment um, for Cassie as well um, to see your works and give feedback, how to improve on it, you know, the, the struggle of um, being online, but we're doing ways so that you, we can um, give feedback and connect to you more. So um, let's see. I don't think we have questions anymore, but let us know if you have more questions for Cassie. Cassie, do you want to add anything else? Um, while I'm looking at the questions in the chat. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. Um, thank you for having me here today. I'm, I'm always so honored to be able to share my work with the Etcher community and to, um, you know, hopefully impart some of my knowledge that I've learned through my years of painting um, to you guys. So thank you so much for your kindness for being here. And I hope to see you in the acrylic course. It honestly, like we were saying earlier, buckle on in. It's a ride. It is so, uh, it's such an amazing experience getting to know all of those who join us. It becomes like this little family of people learning how to paint with acrylic and uh, I would be honored if you joined us and just kind of in, you know embarked on something new if you're afraid um, I was too at one point and now acrylic has become basically my world um, and something that I do professionally for others so definitely give it a shot if you're a little nervous this is your sign to just kind of jump right in and even if you're not quite ready to start painting even just by you know attending the course and learning all that information might make that leap 
a little bit easier. So not as scary and intimidating. So I'm here every step of the way. Um, I always say like, email me, message me, you know, get in contact. And um, I hope to see you there. And just once again, thank you for having me spending your afternoon and um, uh, to the incredible host Kathleen today. Um, as always, you are just phenomenal. And um, I can always say that we're, we're also thankful to have you and Etra is hashtag blessed. So thank you for being amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you are amazing. And Darth just mentioned, I think we need an Etra plus Cassie kiss shirts. I think we do. Make it happen. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make it happen, of course. Um, okay. I think before we lose more uh, people who are live here in the chat, like I promised earlier, um, for those who have stick with us, um, did stick with us till the end, uh, you are going to win. Uh, you get a chance to win. Um, a prize from Etra Studio, and I'll explain the mechanics in a while. So, you are going to win a ta-da watercolor postcard. Oh, yes. These are these are really interesting because you can um these are literally postcards. Yep, postcards. And yep, my camera doesn't do justice. Um, but you can imagine what postcards look like at the back. <laughs> um, and you can paint on it like at the front, so you can send your loved ones you know beautiful paintings who knows you can also make you know the homeworks in cast for cassie's course here um and you can post it and you can just send it to you know your friends and encourage them to try acrylics as well that would be a good idea um all right so for um you to win the mechanics would be you don't need to type in anything just yet um when i type the word go in the chat Feel free to type any, just one number from 1 to 50. And when you see the word st stop, um, I won't be accepting any entries after that. So I'll give you just 5 seconds or 10 seconds. Let's give it 10 seconds for the delay. Um, 10 seconds. Um, when I type the word go, start entering your entries. So this number here, I've written something at the back is a number from 1 to 50. So feel free to guess any number starting now. Okay, so that's going to be 10, 9, 8, 7, I'm holding it right, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, maybe I can extend and stop. Okay surprisingly <laughs> someone already got it like oh like right on oh wow okay so before i announce the winner lucky winner of this um at your watercolor postcard any final thoughts cassie before we um close the session you guys are amazing. Keep on painting and just thank you for being here. I hope to see you in our acrylic course. And uh, otherwise, I will catch you around Etcher. And thank you as always for having me. Thank you so much, Cassie. And all right. Thank you as well, everyone, for sticking with us till the end. And the number right here, I'm seeing this for my interfiz, and I'm pretty sure it's also the same with what Cassie's seeing on StreamYard. But um, the first person who got the number, is 10 10 and then so this is the number first can you see that it's oh yeah 23. 23 and the first person who got it is james coleman congratulations james uh you won an extra watercolor postcard so just message us um here are the steps that you need to do just message us at hello at etcher studio Dot com just shoot us a message to claim your prize and we'll go ahead and um, ask for details for you to for us to send your prize um, but apart from that if you guys have any questions again the uh, in the chat I think the message or the link to Cassie scores is pinned so feel free to check that out again congratulations James and we're super excited for you guys um, for Cassie's introduction to acrylics course and if you're going to be following along make sure to i will see you we will see you next <laughs> week. we will see you yeah <laughs> thank 
you so much, everyone. And thank you so much, Cassie. You've been amazing and so wonderful to chat thank with you. while painting. You make everything look so easy. And we'll definitely be with you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And until next time, make more art. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>